the way, King Dick back here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. So who is Nick Sirianni? That's the real question. What kind of coach is he? Is his name Nick Sirianni really? Or is it Nick Kotite? Because the Eagles could be on the verge of total collapse. And I think this game versus Seattle will let us know everything we need to know. This is the biggest test of Nick Sirianni's coaching career. Why do I say that? Because he has to, he has to steer this ship right. These guys are sinking, and they're sinking fast. If you look at the effort that the Eagles have made in the last two weeks, they haven't even shown up. Okay, you can't tell me, well, Dallas beat the hell out of him, the 49ers beat the hell out of him, yeah, they did. But it ain't because the Eagles are bad. Well, good morning, good people. Mm. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods here. On this thirsty Thursday morning, I hope everybody's having a great day. We're already here. It's actually football day. We'll be live streaming tonight, of course, watching the game and uh, talking about the Dallas Cowboys as they get ready to take on the Buffalo Bills. Wow. And I'm going to be here to say that the Buffalo Bills are losing one of their advantages. I have been watching the weather, okay? You would think that I'm a weather nerd or something, but since Saturday, I've been looking at the weather in Buffalo because, you know, when we looked at the schedule and we talked about December was going to be brutal, we got the Eagles, we got Buffalo, you know, the Lions were gonna be good, and, and you know, we just like, oh, and we gotta go on the road to Buffalo. And in my mind, you think about last year, do you remember how many blizzards they had in Buffalo last year? You remember the good old clips of Jim Kelly out there warming up and the snow was just blowing in their face and everything else. And, you know, when you ride up to Ralph Wilson Stadium, I remember when I rode there, we did a photo shoot in 2013 for United Way. You, the stadium is mostly below the ground level because when you pull up to it, it looks like a high school stadium. And it's got this real long rant that goes all the way down to the field. It's a real bowl in the ground. Well, here's what's crazy. You know, since I started watching, I've seen the temperature ranges, you know, and this long range forecast, you know, the weather, man, he can't get that shit right. But I've seen temperatures from like 47 down to 45, 46, you know, and then, you know, uh, yesterday they popped up with light rain possible and stuff. And this morning I'm looking and it says 50 degrees light rain, 50, 50 in Buffalo in late December? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is huge. We know that the Cowboys are used to playing at perfect temperatures at AT&T. And when you get teams that are dome teams that are playing in cold weather spots, it's harder for them. 50 degrees? Are you serious? That's insane. And it reminds me because, see, couple of things here. I play the clip, of course, Philly 500. Philly 500 didn't do a video yesterday. Philly 500 did not do a single video yesterday. And he's had two since the Cowboys victory over them. The Cowboys have broke the Eagles. They are in free fall right now. We got people calling out their coach and stuff and we hear that the Eagles his game plan is basically throwing the ball to three guys. Fonte Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard. And see, this is the difference between, say, the Dallas Cowboys philosophy and Nick Sirianni's. If you look at the Dallas Cowboys, it's kind of like what I envisioned years ago. I, I tried to do a shirt with a hydra on it, Greek mythology. The Hydra was this multi-headed beast. You cut off one head, you, know, you take your sword, you know. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? You cut off one of the heads, another one grows back in its place. Is that why you are here? And that is because Dak Prescott in his career, here's what's kind of crazy. 
I don't have the statistics in front of me, but when the Cowboys get the ball to six or more receivers with Dak Prescott, they're like 90% victories. It's kind of like when Emmitt Smith would get 100 yards, the Cowboys almost always won. And if you look at the Cowboys right now, some games they're hitting eight different people. It's literally insane. Yeah, and let me give you an example. I want you to listen to this now, okay? These are players that have caught passes from Dak Prescott this season. You got Tony Pollard. That's one, okay? Tony Pollard has, let's see, wait, let me get to receiving, okay? Tony Pollard has 49 catches. Tony Pollard. Rico Dattle has got 12. You've got Deuce Vaughn. He's got six. You got C.D. Lamb, who's got 96. You got Kayvon Turpin, who's got 11. That's five guys. Um, you got Brandon Cooks, that's six. You got Hunter Lipke, that's seven. You got Peyton Hendershot, that's eight. You got Jake Ferguson, that's nine. You got Michael Gallup, that's 10. You got Luke Schoonmaker, that's 11. You got Jalen Brooks, that's 12. You got Sean McKinnon, even Sean McKinnon. That's 13 different guys, 13 different guys. You may be able to shut down, and nobody really has, except for the coaching, CeeDee Lamb. But then you got to worry about Brandon Cooks and Jake Ferguson and Jalen Toll. There's so many different ways you can go. And the thing with Dak Prescott has always been good at is finding the open man. It was one of those knocks that the Cowboys used to get early on his career. Des Bryant and Tony Romo, Des Bryant was just physical. Des Bryant wasn't always open, but he'd outmuscle the ball. Tony Romo would find a way to get to him. But the thing about it was Tony Romo threw more of his interceptions at Des Bryant than anywhere else. Dak Prescott was always like, you get open, I'm going to get you the ball. And that's what they're doing. But they would say, oh, well, Dak Prescott is just dinking and dunking. Well, he was dinking and dunking to a 13-3 and record and not turning over the football. Isn't the object of the game winning? If this guy's open out here in the flat for six yards, seven yards, and gets a first down, where's the problem here? We all, as fantasy football, want to see the deep ball. Chicks dig the deep ball. Okay, well, it is what it is. Winning trumps it all. And that's the difference of philosophy between the Eagles and the Cowboys. And it's been kind of crazy, and I talk about the Eagles, because they're our competition. It's huge if we end up being the second seed or the number one seed. And with the Eagles right now in free fall going to play Seattle, I don't know if Geno Smith, his status with this pulled groin, they are a better team with Geno Smith. And also being on the road, that it's a long flight out there, and you're questing yourself that I'm not going to say that's a gimme for the Eagles. It's very possible that they lose. And it's very possible that we lose to Buffalo. We're a two-and-a-half-point underdog. That's the way it works in the NFL. But with the Eagles and this thing, I've said they reminded me, I think it was the 2007 Giant team, or maybe it was the 2011 one. But the Giants kept finding ways to win when they shouldn't have. You know, the Eagles should have lost to the Commanders there that first time where, you know, the Commanders were up big and everything else, and they should have gone through and maybe tried the two-point conversion and won it instead of overtime. Or if Scary Terry had caught a couple of those passes late in the game that would have given them first downs, they beat the Eagles. But the Giant team... The difference being is, you know, and, and I mean me no disrespect to the Eagles because you play the people in front of you last year. They won the games and things that they needed to to win to go to the Super Bowl. But let's be clear here. You played the Giants, a team that you've dominated over the years with Daniel Jones. I know people say Daniel Jones was, was great, but Daniel Jones, that team is not did not rally behind him. In fact, I think they don't like him. That guy had two TDs and six interceptions. And Tommy DeVito, a guy living at his mama's house and she's cooking dinner for him and stuff and doing his laundry for him, has got eight TDs, is a three and one record, and only two interceptions 
with the same team that Daniel Jones had. You play those guys at home with an extra week of rest, and then you go to San Francisco, you play San Francisco, you knock out Brock Purdy, and you got just, uh, Josh Johnson as a quarterback? Two, that, that's all you had to do to get to the Super Bowl? Hey, okay, fine. But that giant team, I remember a game against the Cardinals where the Cardinal receiver catches a pass late in the game, sets the ball down on the field. He was never touched. He thought he was touched, but he was never touched. Turns the ball over to the Giants, they kick the field goal, they win. And it was week after week of like that happening that the Giants ended up winning. Although I will say that giant team, they came to our house where we were the number one seed, kicked our teeth in on the way to going through and beating the uh, New England Patriots that were 18 and 0. They had to go through hell to win that Super Bowl. But that's how it's been for the Eagles week after week. They've had like five or six games of double digit comebacks in the second half. And you can't live that way. And now they're being exposed where the coach, hey, I got three receivers. And we're learning if you keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket with his injury to his knee, he's not as effective as running, and they're not running the football. That's their fatal flaw. Whereas the Cowboys are understanding, and this is, goes to Jason, who is just basically saying, I'm an idiot. I'm going to say that this team is a lot different team than they were against San Francisco and definitely against the Cardinals. The Cowboys had the great awakening after that San Francisco. That was the come to Jesus moment. That was, I'm about to get fired if we don't do something different, Mike McCarthy. And they tore the shit up or they opened the book up and said, we may not be ready to do all this stuff, but we got to do this. Then they started using CD. They started moving the pocket. They started doing more pre-stap motion. And since that time, every week, another cylinder starts to click in on this team. And that's why this team is now 32.6 points a game. And the offensive line has solidified. Now we got to go to Buffalo. We got to play Josh Allen and crew. Josh Allen, hey, at least the weather's not going to be in their favor. Josh Allen, a team that's up and down. We don't know if Josh Allen and crew are good right now because they, you know, went toe to toe with the Eagles in overtime, or if that was the beginning of the Eagles free falling. We don't know with them beating Kansas City with a controversial call was them being a good team or Kansas City coming back down to earth with a lack of receivers and getting a controversial call. They'll be playing home, playing for their playoff lives, which means they will be desperate, which means you will get their best take. Now, this is another opportunity because it's Cam Newton says up here, you know, uh, interesting thing about Cam Newton, I'm going to say from personal experience, Cam Newton quietly does a lot in the community that nobody really knows about. He is an incredible individual that looks out for the community. However, when you're dressed kind of like a clown or Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band, and you're throwing shade on everybody, you look kind of like you're butt hurt. That's my own take right there. But as they put through and they say that Josh Allen is a game changer, I can kind of agree. Josh Allen can be a game changer. Game changer both ways. We've seen Josh Allen in the fourth quarter throw interceptions in the end zone or overtime, I should say. We've seen games where Josh Allen, who turns the ball over more than anybody else since he's been in the league between the fumbles and the interceptions. But they don't talk about that for whatever reason. Dak Prescott, it's amazing. It's amazing. Josh Allen has 74 interceptions since 2018, where Dak Prescott has only 71 since 2016. Take that as you will. As we get ready to get out of here, I want to listen to Cam Newton, their thoughts on get up and throwing shade at the quarterbacks that are winning. 
parody to a tongue of Valoa, Jared Goff, and really, Dak Prescott. Hmm. These are game managers. They're, they're not difference makers. Listen, I don't give a damn what you do. You don't have to score every time. You just don't have to throw a pick every time either. There's a difference between managers of the game and difference makers of a game. All right, so for obvious reasons, he's got a lot of mm. attention across the board yesterday and continues today. Dan, as a quarterback, when you hear him say that, what are you hearing him say? Well, he's accurate with what he's saying, first of all. I, here's this, Greeny. Cam Newton's one of the best football players in the NFL over the last decade. So there's been a lot that has been said about him in his career since his comments yesterday. He's earned the right to be respected when it comes to the things that he did on the field. He was an MVP. So that's first of all. Second of all, what, Dak is, what, what Cam is saying is accurate. That there are different levels of quarterbacks. And game managers are not got. First of all, it's not a bad thing to be a game manager. We he would have been happy to have been a game manager. <laughs> have made game manager to be something that has a negative connotation. That's not accurate. Are they lesser? Absolutely. Are game managers lesser than game changers? Yes. We probably have six game changers at that position in the NFL right now. Maybe seven. Most guys are game managers. Now, there's different levels of game managers. That doesn't mean they're bad players. Jared Goff, yes, is a game manager. He's a high-end game manager. Dak Prescott, a game manager, a high-end game manager. This year that he's playing that way, that would be my question. Is Dak not playing at a higher level than that? But Green, he is, yes. Yeah. I have said this for years. There's like six or seven guys right. that you put them anywhere and they're going to be good. And then there's a group of like another seven seven or eight that are really good players. And then dependent upon what is around them, if you got the good offensive line and good playmakers and, and really good play caller, they can play into that level. But that's not who they are over the body of work. He would get in here. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I, I think that honestly, I think there's like four like game changers. No, there's more than that. I, not, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Joe, Jackson. Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson. Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. That's you're, 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 so you're, you mean to tell me that you wouldn't put Jalen Hurts in a game changer situation, in a conversation? Justin Herbert? How the hell no. can you put Justin no. Herbert? I, he's I a bum. A skill set. Jalen Hurts. No, Jalen Hurts. I think he's borderline. But but moving beyond that. So moving be came up. So, okay. So so obviously I took a lot of heat yesterday for this. So why it bothered me because you're talking about game manager and how it is described, how it has a negative connotation. So you cannot. We know the connotation that's ascribed to it now. So you can't just call out guys and say they are game managers. If he had said Jared Goff, I'd be like, mm, I don't see. I why can't see you it, call but him out that way? No, no, no. Listen. Let me finish. I would say, okay, I don't want to agree, but okay, he can say that. Purdy, I'd be like, mm, okay, I see why he's saying that. A lot of people feel like Purdy benefits from the offense around him. I feel like that's a lazy take, but okay. All four of those guys in a year where Dak Prescott, where you have talked, we have talked about Dak Prescott being at MVP caliber, all four of those guys, Tua, you, you've been a staunch supporter of Tua. Like, I felt like all four of them, it was doing a bit much. And it came off like, it came off really bitter. And like these guys, and Cam can say whatever he wants because he's earned the right. A former MVP, mm -hmm. an offensive player of the year. So he has earned the right. But, but to use that term, you know he's not saying it with the nuance that you're saying it. It's, there is a negative connotation to the word, to the phrase game manager. And this season of all seasons, to call out to and Dak like that, I, I, don't, I don't think that's accurate. So you're saying it, like Cam's trying to minimize their performance by the way he's yes. categorizing yeah, it. Yes. I think a lot of people yes. will take yes. it that way, that's, whether he meant it that way or not. People will take it. But, that but way. The, I think the way that Cam is speaking is, is saying, listen, there's a group of guys that change games. No matter what, they change games. And then there's a group of guys that this don't. Is, this They're is really a... good players, and they, they benefit from the play caller or the offensive line or the people around them, but you win a lot of games with. That's, that, that doesn't mean that they're bad players. A lot of people are taking it that way. I don't think Cam is sitting there going, these guys are bad, all they're doing is managing the game. He's just saying we gotta make sure that we don't put them in a category that they haven't Well, the, So the complicated part is that the entirety of the context of what he's saying we don't have, and th that is the point. We don't know if he, if he meant it the way you're talking about or not. The, the term game manager, it's fairly or not, has taken on something yes. of a negative no, connotation. And it, that's, uh, no, I'll be very clear, it's unfair. Right. It is unfair. So, so, 
unfair. And so, but yes, because I think people will hear gay manager and they'll say, it sounds like you're saying that's something almost anyone could do. What did I remember when Dak was going through the contract? Yeah. Years ago, what was the phrase that I said? Y you said, don't pay good players great player money. Correct. Don't pay good player, but don't pay him great player money. How do you get in here? I think here's one of the things that's here we go with the money. Conversation. Yeah. Because when you look at whether a quarterback is a game changer or a game manager, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they all need their teammates. This is key. Right? We've seen that with Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? When the offensive line was depleted. We've seen it with Joe Burrow. Even though he won a playoff game getting sacked nine times, when you get to the Super Bowl, you need that old line to block Aaron Donald so you can get that ball off to Jamar Chase. So at yeah. the end of the day, you're going to need your teammates in a team mm -hmm. sport, which everyone is needed. Whether you're a game changer or a game manager. I think the difference, Harry, though, is this. When you're a game changer and you have your teammates, you can win the Super Bowl. Unquestionably. When you're a game manager and you have your teammates, you hope you win the Super Bowl. And this is where I've got you, Dan Orlowski, because Lamar Jackson, not to throw shade on Lamar, is one in three in the playoffs. Josh Allen... If he, if these two guys are game changers, then why have they won? You just said, if you are a game changer, you win the Super Bowl. Neither of these guys have. And you threw out there Justin Herbert, who hasn't even won a playoff game. Whose team right now with Kellen Moore, the same coach that Dak Prescott had last year as an offensive coordinator, has 21 points a game. So Dak Prescott was handicapped with that guy. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy in his mama's basement, I'm sorry, my basement with a voodoo doll and a day job who just happens to love the Dallas Cowboys. I appreciate you guys. See you tonight for the live stream. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.